Hey everyone, it's Hamish Hodder here and today we're going to be talking about Goodwill. This was a topic suggested to me by a viewer so I thought that I would cover this in a video and essentially Goodwill is an intangible asset. So in today's video we're going to discuss what intangible assets are and I'll break down some of the different types of them and then we'll get into Goodwill specifically as a type of intangible asset and we'll talk about how you need to approach uh, goodwill and intangible assets as a long-term investor. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like. And of course, if you have any topics or suggestions, make sure you leave them down in the comment section below and I'll check them out. But for now guys, let's jump into it. All right, so let's just start by explaining what intangible assets are. An intangible asset is an asset that is not physical in nature. It is something that is owned by a business that is providing that business a benefit but isn't something that physically exists. One of the major types of intangible assets is what we call intellectual property. And intellectual property can take its form in a number of different ways. It could be a trademark, it could be a patent, or it could be a copyright. And an example of this is, let's talk about say Coca-Cola, uh, the way that Coca-Cola designs its labels, that is copyrighted. So no other company can design its labels like Coca-Cola. And that is an economic benefit to Coca-Cola. And of course, another type of intangible asset is what we call goodwill. So let's explain what exactly goodwill is. Goodwill is an intangible asset that is created when a company buys another smaller company. When one company buys another smaller company, the premium that that bigger company pays over the smaller company's equity is what we call goodwill. And that is where goodwill is created. So let me give you an example so that we can explain it and it will be a lot easier for you to understand. Let's say that company A is going to buy company B for $80 million. Company B has assets of 100 million and liabilities of 30 million. So that means that company B has equity of 100 million minus 30 million, which equals 70 million. So essentially we've got company A, which is buying company B for $80 million and because company B has 70 million in equity, that's a 10 million difference between the price being paid and the equity within the company being bought. When that transaction is complete, $10 million of goodwill is created for company A. So then why does goodwill exist? Why, do we, why is goodwill created when a company pays a premium over the equity in the business that it's buying? And the reason for that is to account for the economic benefits of the brand. So company B, it has equity of 70 million, but it also, when, when company A buys it, company A is also getting company B's uh, customer base. They're getting their good customer relationships. They're getting their brand recognition, people recognizing company B's brand. They're getting the employee relationships. They're getting all of these things that are not accounted for in the equity of company B. And since the purchaser, which is company A, and the seller, company B, have agreed to this transaction of selling the company, of this per company B selling the company to company A for $80 million, then they both agree that the value of the brand of company B is $10 million. And for that reason, $10 million of goodwill is created. So then what do we need to know as investors? Now, just to start this off, as a long-term investor using my strategy, I really don't focus that much on goodwill. It's really not something that I worry about too much, and it's not something you should worry about too much, but you do need to know what it is. And the reason for that is because you need to be careful of companies that have a lot of goodwill and I'll explain why. We want to invest in high equity companies and the reason for that is because high equity companies have enough assets to cover their debt obligations and it means that we're not going to invest in companies that could go bankrupt. However, goodwill is intangible and sometimes that goodwill can't be sold in, and used in order to pay down debt. If a large proportion of a company's equity is goodwill, then I will generally exclude that goodwill from my calculations and the reason for that is because that goodwill could be eliminated instantly. Within one quarter, that goodwill could be completely wiped off the company's books. I've seen companies lose more than half their equity when their goodwill has been impaired in one single quarter. So what happens is every single quarter, um, the company needs to assess whether or not that goodwill is still providing benefits. And if the benefits are less than the amount of goodwill that's on the books, 
then they have to do what's called an impairment and they take an expense and they pretty much delete a part of that goodwill. And I've seen companies lose up to half and even more than half their equity in one single quarter from a goodwill impairment. And basically that means the goodwill is eliminated off the sheet and the equity that you thought the company had is now gone within a single quarter. However, that being said, that's not a common occurrence and companies with a lot of goodwill, that, that also isn't a common occurrence. But a good rule of thumb is generally just to know what each of the things on your company or the companies that you're looking to invest in, know what each of the things on the balance sheet mean, know what each of the assets are and what each of the liabilities are. And that way you won't be caught off guard and you won't be surprised when something comes up. So goodwill would be one of those. Make sure you understand what goodwill is. Um, and there will be other things on there like deferred revenue or something here, something there. Make sure you go into the annual reports and you also do your online research so that you know what each of those things are and that you're not going to be surprised yeah, in a really, really negative way. So that's all for this video, just a quick one, just explaining what goodwill is and how it fits into the intangible assets. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. And again, as I said, if you have any topics that you want me to talk about, make sure you leave them down in the comments section below. But for now guys, I'll see you in the next one.